Today's video is going to be on how I earned money before I was old enough to get a job, how you can earn money, and just kind of some ideas you can go by um, whenever you, maybe you're not 15, 16, however old you have to be to get a job. These are just some ideas, and even if you do have a job, maybe make some money on the side. So what I did when I was younger is I learned how to mow yards in the fourth grade. So I would get out there and I would mow people's yards. I always mowed my neighbor's yard um, and got paid that way. Um, I used to chop wood and sell firewood in the winter. Now, if you can't drive, then what I always did was I would, I would say, listen, must come pick up. But since you're coming to pick it up, I'm going to take $20 off of it. So I charged like 80 bucks a rick for a rick of firewood. And I would just stack it in my yard. And I would post it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And someone literally, I usually sold the firewood in the same day that I stacked it and everything. And um, it was just a really great way to make some extra money. 80 bucks, that's some pretty dang good money too. Um, you know, 80 bucks for a rick of wood. And you probably could even charge higher than that. Like I probably should have been charging like 100 bucks for a rick of wood. Um, anyways, that's a great way. Um, just selling anything you can get your hands on. I sold wasp spray um, whenever I was younger. Made a killing a ton off of wasp spray. Um, and then I also would, uh, you know, a great way. This wasn't this wasn't around back whenever I was like younger because like Facebook hadn't gotten too big yet. Um, but if you go on Facebook Marketplace. And you look under free stuff, and I know Gary Vee talks a lot about this. If you look under free stuff, and uh, just you know, go go pick up the free stuff, and then relist it on Facebook and sell it. So let's say that you see a chest of drawers um, on Facebook, and it's for free. Go pick it up. You know, don't don't get a piece of crap. Uh, chest of drawers that's all beaten up that's you're gonna have to like sand down and paint or something like that you don't want to get just junk but you definitely want to get something for free that you can relist and make money off of once you sell that again on Facebook marketplace so if someone was selling a leaf blower I would hit them up and say hey I want or a free leaf blower I'd say hey I want your leaf blower and then I would go on Facebook marketplace and see how much electric leaf blowers have sold for in the past so let's say $30 for a Ryobi uh, leaf blower. And so I would list that for like 35 or 40 bucks. Uh, you always want to list things a little bit higher than you're actually willing to take for it. Uh, that way, if they try to negotiate and talk you down, you're still making what you want to make. Um, but that's just a really great way to make some money. And Gary, Gary V is really big about going to yard sales. He'll go to yard sales and find Pokemon cards like five for a dollar and then he'll look on uh, ebay craigslist and stuff and like some of those cards have gone for like 20 one went for 150 i saw one time like it's just crazy people are giving away free stuff or very cheap stuff and don't even realize what it is they have and gary v has done that with stuffed animals all kinds of different things you can do that with um so those are a few ideas of what you can do really just get out there and hustle what kind of service can you provide can you go to walmart and buy some chemicals and then start detailing people's cars or just washing their cars for them what can you do go door to door and offer people maybe pulling weeds older people pulling weeds for them get creative and don't be a scared don't be scared of some hard work um, because that's where you can really make some money especially uh, you know, older people, um, they, they need some assistance, stuff like that. And not everybody's out there uh, that's willing to mow their own yard or willing to pull their own weeds. So you'd be surprised how much business you could get from that. And this is not really a job. I mean, it is, but you're not really making money. A lot of you folks are really, I get DMs all the time. This is why I made this video is because I had so many 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds DMing me asking me how I made money at their age, how they can make money. Focus more on learning instead of making the money because yes, you're going to put in a lot of time and you're going to be able to save up some money. But when you turn 18, you're going to be able to go get higher level jobs like in a factory. I know I talked about that in another video where factories are really high paying labor jobs that you can make a lot of money pretty quickly at. 
pl uh, plenty of opportunity for overtime, uh, but that's for when you turn 18. What I would do, if and I did not do this, and I wish I had, if I could go back to being 14, 15 year old kid again, and I had to think, what am I going to do over my summer break, or what am I going to do for a job? Instead of being focused on making a lot of money and like saving that money up. Because when you're 15, I mean, it's really hard to go out there and invest in real estate or invest your money in anything. You know, you've got a lot of time on your hands at 15, not a lot of money. If I had to be 15, 14 again, I would go find someone to work for for free. I would find someone who has already done what I want to do, even if you have to be their assistant. If Even if you're going to get coffee and, and stir, stir in the creamer in for them. Um working for free is an amazing way to get hands-on experience and that knowledge it you know you're working for free but the knowledge that you're gaining from taking this time and working for free for like your mentor or whoever it is you're out here trying to um job shadow work for free for uh if you can just do that like it's priceless the knowledge you are going to gain from that is literally priceless so that's what I would do. And I mean, I've always been, I've been interested in real estate since I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So what I would do is I would ask a real estate agent or an appraiser or a broker, someone who's in the real estate industry who has already done what I wanted to do. I would ask them if I could just work for them for free. And I actually did do this. Um, when I graduated high school, I was 17 years old. Most people are 18 by the time they graduate, but I was one of the younger ones in my class, one of the youngest actually. And um, I sent a ton of emails out to people um, and I, I wouldn't hardly get a response, but I just kept per persevering. I kept sending emails. No one wanted to fool with me, but I finally found that person. There's people out there willing to help you. I finally found that person. I didn't give up whenever I was out here emailing, sending 20, you know, 30, 40, 50 emails a day. Um, and I finally found a lady that was willing to give me a shot. And I took it. I worked for free during the summer. And that actually led to them. I had learned so much that summer that led to them giving me a position with the secretary. So I helped the secretary out now. Obviously, my goal, my my dream job is not to be a secretary, but you've got to think long term in this. You know, I did not think I was too good uh, to do that job. I didn't think that I was above a secretary position. Of course, it wasn't what I wanted to do all my life, but I learned so much from the back end of the business, the real estate business and how it worked. Um you know, I think all real estate agents should work the secretary position for a while because you see things from that position that you don't see as a realtor. You see ways that you can make it easier for your admin. Um, you see more problems that real estate agents are having than if you're just out here helping people buy and sell houses. It's really, I'm really so thankful I got that angle. I'm thankful I worked for free whenever I could have been out here making hundreds of dollars. And I'm also thankful that I took that nine dollars an hour uh secretary position when i did um, because i learned a lot and then whenever i turned 18 i went and i got my real estate license but i was so prepared as an 18 year old real estate agent because i had spent that time uh, as a 17 year old working for free and of course before i was 17 i read books like i read real estate books um, by robert kiyosaki dean graziosi like just all those real estate guys um, so I, you know, I've had my real estate license for five years now, but really, if you think about it, when I started this journey at 16, it's like I've got seven years of experience under my belt. I've almost got a decade of real estate experience because I worked on myself. I read books. I worked in the real estate uh, environment whenever I wasn't 18 yet and got just saw so many different angles of the business. So uh, it's, I know it's hard to see what you want to do when you're 14, 15. That's such a huge decision you, you want to make with your life. Like, what do I want to do the rest of my life? But generally, you kind of know what field interests you. Does business interest you at all? Or is that just something you don't care about? 
um, just the stock market interest you. Maybe you want to go follow a financial advisor around with like Modern Woodman or Edward Jones or something, you know, and just be their assistant, do their paperwork, but also be learning, you know, how stuff works in the process. Um, maybe you want to get into fashion. So you go offer to work for free for a retail shop or something like that, you know, just different things. Maybe you want to be a photographer. So you go edit pictures for a photographer and you job shadow them or whatever it may be. Um, there's so many ways out there that you can get that experience. And I promise you, you'll look back one day and you'll be like, wow, that experience, that time I worked for free was worth more than any amount of money they could have paid me for doing my job. I would much rather be getting zero dollars an hour, but a wealth of knowledge than I would, you know, $15 an hour, not learning anything because you are your best investment and the skills that you invest in yourself and you curate and you, you know, bring, bring up and grow is what's going to pay over the long term. So you really, really, really got to think long term in this. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps. I know that I kind of gave some ideas up front and then I went off on a tangent at the end, but I did that because I really felt like most of y'all need to shift your focus from making money to learning and getting that experience instead of making money. Whenever you turn 18, then you can start making some big money. Then you can start, you know, legally investing in real estate, doing whatever. But before that, I would go all out on that experience and that free knowledge as much as I could. And people are really going to be impressed if you're a 14, 15, 16 year old kid coming up there just wanting to learn. That's so rare these days. And a lot of people are willing to help the you know, young people who are willing to learn. So I hope that helps. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it.